Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode seven of the Network Podcast. My name is Sebastiano Villano, and as always, I'm joined by Joseph Inzano. What's going on, guys? All right, so this episode, I know we say we're going to bring back the themed ones, but we're going to go back to a random episode. Um, we're not going to do a tier list this time, though. I also have finals coming up this week, so a bit crunched on time just trying to get my last assignments in. So we're just going to jump right into it. Um, thank you, everyone, for participating on our Instagram polls. Um, we will post these again when this comes out on Tuesday morning. And you guys seem to like this more than the top five segment. So we're going to go right into this. So, Joe, over or underrated? Ice cream. Ice cream? I'm going to go overrated. Not a Ooh, huge fan. I didn't expect that. There's not a ton of flavors that I like. Mainly just strawberry and occasionally vanilla. But I'm I'm sure people that like chocolate probably like it more. Oh, back one that we didn't even put down over underrated vanilla ice cream. Underrated. I'd say it's underrated. Thank you. Thank you. When I was younger and like, I feel like when everyone they're younger, they're just like, oh, I want chocolate. I want chocolate. But now sometimes I just like, I feel like vanilla ice cream is really underrated and people don't appreciate like a good vanilla just tastes really good. I, I totally agree. It was kind of, I like strawberry and kind of instead of yeah. chocolate but i mean especially if you put it on like a, a warm dessert like a warm cake or a warm pie or something vanilla ice cream is so good i can't I, I haven't i don't really eat ice cream with other you know like i know people eat it with waffles and yeah what, what else i don't do it cookies yeah like at insomnia cookies mm. i've had a couple of times where they put in between the two cookies that's pretty good and my Costa, my little brother, makes brownies like every weekend. So sometimes I'll have it on top of a brownie. That's pretty good. But going back to our um, ice cream, I feel like we're going to continue the trend of last week where I just say the opposite of you every time because I'm going to go for underrated. I don't I don't really have that much of a reasoning. I think it's a really good dessert. And also another type of ice cream that's really good is soft serve, which mm. I love in the summer. A cone with soft serve and some rainbow sprinkles. Yeah, and a, another question. Sorry, you go. I'm I'm gonna change it. I'm gonna say if I, it's it's in the middle. You know what I'm saying? It's not it's not overrated, but it's not underrated. So, if, but if you had to pick one, would you are you sticking with overrated <laughs> or going to underrated? There's no no being in the middle here. <laughs> I'll I'll go to underrated. Okay, and another question that I just thought of again, mm-hmm. a very important question, when you get a soft serve or just like any kind of ice cream. Rainbow sprinkles or chocolate sprinkles? No sprinkles. You do not get sprinkles. Okay, you're boring. I'm going to put that on our Instagram post too because there is a correct answer, but I don't want to say it. <laughs> I don't want to say it now to persuade anyone. But the correct answer is yeah, no so, sprinkles. Do you have any toppings on your ice cream? Not really. I don't I honestly don't have ice cream that often. I don't have dessert that often, but Yeah. yeah. When, I, when I'm at home, I've, we just always have sprinkles. I mean, I have it like occasionally once a week. Or if you go to Confects, I really like the um, – they have a good brownie sundae. They warm up the brownie. Then they put ice cream on top. Sometimes w- if you want whipped cream and a cherry and I think like sprinkles as well, that's really good. Would you rather have soft serve or normal ice cream? Ooh. It depends on the mood. Am I, are you saying normal like <laughs> normal with mood, a brownie yeah. or normal with sprinkles or just like – Normal ice cream, like, because most of the time I get it, it's just ice cream. I'm talking about, like, normal vanilla versus normal, or versus soft vanilla. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. Yeah, I know what you're saying. That's a tough choice. Because I don't really have soft. I am gonna. I would say soft serve because I don't have soft serve wow. very often. So, that is a tough choice. But I'm, my reasoning is that regular ice cream is available to me more often. So if I ever had to choose between the two, I would say soft serve because I only really have it during the summer. Mm-hmm. What, what would you say? I'd say it depends on the flavor. But I would just van- say, oh, yeah, vanilla? they don't really have strawberry soft serve. Yeah, like vanilla. I, I do like the soft serve like at, like at uh, Point Pleasant where they got the orange vanilla and the raspberry yeah, vanilla. Yeah, I do love Boardwalk. That stuff's good. Um, I don't think I've ever had that. Just so plain. let's say you'd have you'd have to have your favorite your favorite regular ice cream, which I guess is strawberry, and your favorite soft serve ice cream. But then it would which be, would you pick? It would be normal. It would be normal ice cream. Okay. 
Another question about ice cream. Would do you prefer it in a cup or a cone? Cone all day. Oh yeah, I I have a theory about this. I feel like even when I don't want it in a cone, I get it in a cone because of all the times I was younger and I really wanted it in a cone, but my parents wouldn't let me because I'd make a mess. <laughs> So now I just get a cone every time to make up for it. Yeah. But you know what's annoying about cones? Is the best cones are the big waffle cones. You know what I'm talking about? Like I do. They're I, I, big. I they're not saying. exactly like flat on the top. It kind of yeah. like the curve for the ice cream. But yeah. you have to get like three scoops to be able to get that cone. Or else you get like the trash little waffle cones or the trash sugar cones. Like I just want – you can only put a couple – I'd rather – I'd take a couple less scoops of ice cream if I'm if it meant having the good cone. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. All right. Now, off on that ice cream tangent, let's go to the next topic. Over or underrated working out or just any type of exercise, I guess. You, you want to go first for this one? Yes. I am going to have to go with <laughs> underrated <laughs> just because. Who would have got What are you laughing at? Yeah, I, I work out pretty frequently. Um, not that you could tell, but um, I just think I usually do it right when I wake up. I feel it makes me feel pretty good for the day. It gets me in the habit. And, like, I usually put in headphones, sometimes listen to a podcast, sometimes listen to music. And, uh, yeah, I just kind of chill. It's, pre- it's pretty relaxing to me. What do you think? Are you going to go with overrated or underrated? I'm going to go with. Is this a question on like how good it is for you or how how much you enjoy it? Not a, what 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 do you think? Do you think personally? Do you think working out is overrated or under, like do you think the fad of working out where it's just like oh yeah wake up four a.m. workout makes you feel so good just uh, working out in general? You think that's overrated or underrated? Mm, that's tough. That's oh, tough. You can't always be on the fence about everything. <laughs> Pick a stance, buddy. It's a tough question. Uh, I think it's. I think it's over. I don't know. I'm not sure. I, it does. Just tell tell I, us. Th- think out loud. What's your thought process right now okay. that you're in between? Waking up sucks. It is one of the worst feelings <laughs> ever. You don't have to do it in the morning, but I know what you're saying. The, the minute my alarm goes off, the first thing I think of, man, life, my, life just sucks right now. Right, but, but the best, <laughs> the best part of, is after you work out and you got the rest of the day that you know you're looking forward to. You're all like energized now. But waking up sucks. It's terrible. Waking up does suck. Yeah, I feel so, like I don't we know. I'm, everyone I'm used to get up. All right, I'll, you can keep thinking, but I everyone that I've talked to that goes to college. They struggle to get up at like 7 or 8, sometimes even later. Now that we're online, some of my friends like, struggle to get up at like 9 for their first class. But then when we were in high school, we all had to get up before 7 to go to class. It's kind of weird. Like as soon as you get into college, no one is able to wake up like before 8 anymore, even when they go to bed at the same time. So yeah. do you have a final answer for working out? I'm going to go with. Man, that's tough. No, I don't. I mean, you say you say waking up sucks. You don't have to do it in the morning. Right, but if you, I mean, working out at night, you can do it. It's just not. I just, I don't know. It doesn't. It's not the same. Working out in the morning, I feel like, I don't know. It's. I'm. I'm. I'm, I'm yeah, I know. I feel I'm like working out one. in the morning. Is, yeah, working out in the morning. I personally like it. It's also like if I do nothing else the rest of the day. At least I got up and worked out. You know what I mean? And sometimes, even with, like, running or other exercise, if I push it off later in the day, sometimes it's like, I mean, do I really have to today? Or then I have to, like, eat around it because I'm like, oh, I just ate a lot. I have to wait now. Or it's like I can't have certain things before I run or do exercise because, like, it upsets my stomach and stuff. Mm. So it's, like, more of a hassle if I wait to do it later in the day. I mean, also – Ever yeah, since I know. ever since I stopped playing hockey, because uh, when I was playing hockey, a lot of you know working out would just be for hockey, and I'd be lifting for hockey, and a lot yeah. of it would be skating. So it, it wasn't as bad as now, when it when like dude waking up and going for a run is just. I'd I com- I know what you mean completely, dude. It, it and because like yeah, man, it it's brutal. Like especially when you stop playing your sport. Like when I stopped, 
Dude, I, I, I'm not gonna lie, I'm bigger now. Just cause you stop working out like consistently and you just get bigger and, and it's tough. It's tough to keep like just go for runs and stuff like that without playing your sport, you know. With no yeah, goal, but like I psychologically, guess. I feel the same thing. Like psychologically, it's hard to get that motivation and you have nothing to work towards. Yes, like for me yes. personally, working out, I kind of created the habit, so that's fine. But like doing cardio or like even I enjoy soccer, but going to practice soccer, just like you know, even going to shoot or just practice whatever, it's so much harder because I for like the past eight months i had nothing to work for i was like what's the point of me running if i don't really have to do cardio i don't have to get in shape for everything now that i and like now i joined a soccer team again and now i'm finding it so much easier to do cardio because i'm like i kind of i really need this or else i'm going to be struggling in games so it's like you there's you i know exactly what you mean when you need that goal in mind to push yourself and i guess overall you can have a goal like looking better you know and and just yeah, being healthier reaching general, a certain weight, but it's not as easy, for sure. It's not as easy at all. So are you gonna go overall over underrated, overrated or underrated? Sorry, I I'm gonna go overrated. Uh, okay. It's tough. It's tough though. Keep it's keeping tough. the trend of us picking the opposite. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah. If it if it was just running, do you can like if you didn't count running, working out, working out, let's just say that's weight stuff. Would you say running is overrated or underrated? Running is unbelievably overrated, in my opinion. I, <laughs> I think I, I, I think it, it's underrated. I find it miserable, like miserable. I've if I always work, have. once again, if you're working out to train and like you're trying to get your mile time up or you're trying to get faster, more fit, it's I can understand. I can see how it's overrated. But if you're just running to try and stay healthy, you don't have to reach a goal pace. Once again, you put in some music. I feel like my mind is even more free then than when I'm working out because I don't have to think as much when I run than when I work out. I'm kind of just like keep running, listen to music. My mind just wanders places. I find that like really good for myself mentally. It keeps me calm and just like my mind just goes who knows where. I find that pretty good. Mm. So... You have anything else to add to this topic, or do you want to ask the next one? Not really. All right. Uh, next one. A job. Overrated, underrated. This are we talking about like minimum wage, or are we talking about like no, like just a normal a job, a job in general. And the reason I thought about this is because I said I listen to podcasts or sometimes um music at the gym, but the other day I wasn't feeling music and I listened on podcasts, so I started listening to an audio book and I started listening to um rich dad poor dad and it really it got me thinking about the future because i'm only like a third of the way done with it um but he was also talking about like how people and i was also thinking about that at work today like once i graduate school my main purpose in life is to work and i was thinking how much that sucks it's like what what why do you work to get money why do you need money really to just pay off bills and like yeah you want to make more money to experience experience the fun things in life, but oh, even though this is going to sound a bit sad, overall your main thing is going to be your job, just to pay off bills and stuff and pay taxes. I mean, I think that's a you know a morbid way to look at it, uh, for sure. But yeah, I mean, I, that's why it's good to have like things on the side, like investing side products, like the podcast, for example. Oh, I think you and just other things to keep you occupied. You know, enjoy what you're going into, hopefully. You know, like hopefully you pick a career path yeah. that you enjoy so you're not just working to work, you know? Yeah. But just keep talking real quick about this because I want to look up what percent of people don't like their jobs because I know it's, oh, it's that's high. Be... I... So do you think jobs are overrated or underrated? Oh, are, we're talking about normal, like, that's, that's so vague. We're... Working, working in general. All right, let's see your job right now. So for everyone that doesn't know what you do, you want to explain it. Uh, I and how often you work? Absolutely no. I don't want to. No. <laughs> <laughs> you work for a trucking company. You sit in a room and do nothing for like eight hours. Yes. But recently, it's gone up to ten hours, five days a week, Monday through five to through Friday. Yes. Do you think that is overrated or underrated? I think it's unbelievably overrated, and, and maybe that's just because I'm. Um, 
it's a tough spot. You know, I'm in between high school and college. And I, I just kind of feel like... Yeah, you think about it more. You're probably coming from a pretty privileged spot. So it's not like, you know, mm-hmm. I really need the money. And I, yeah, I know it what you almost mean. feels... Your livelihood does not depend on yeah, it. Yeah, and it almost feels... Uh, like a waste of time like it's a lot of hours <laughs> and the money is really just going straight towards investing which i'm sure is great but it yeah in, in the reality, long run it'll definitely make up for it i mean you got to think about like how much do you think your time is worth is my is my time worth 15 dollars an hour that's what i said i, I remember i, I think know. a few podcasts ago i said the quote from the avengers kind of ironically it's like no amount of money has ever bought a second of time. And now I'm kind of in the hard decision. Like this is my only, I have one, I have finals this week and then I'm done until like mid to late September. This is the only summer I have for the next three years because of the way my school works and the co-op, um, blah, blah, blah. And I'm, I'm just trying to decide like how much more do I want to work? Because it's like, I want the money. I want to be able to save because I don't know exactly what I'm going to be able to do in the future and it's also just nice having that steady income because when i have when i make however much a a week it's easy to spend like not a lot i don't spend that much money just like a little money on food here buy this piece of clothing but when i don't have any money coming in it's like there's a finite amount you know what i mean and then my friend mike from work um a friend of the podcast he asked me a good question because we pretty much are if you get a job at ShopRite, basically you'll make $12 an hour for the most part, which is minimum wage. And he was saying, imagine someone came up to you for an offer. Let's just say they had a job for you to do. It wasn't the most strenuous. It wasn't the most easy. It was just like a normal amount of effort for a job. And they said, you work for an hour, I'll give you $12. How would you feel about that? Say it again, say it again. Do okay. you think, like, do you think... 12 and i guess this kind of goes into if minimum wage should be raised but let's say someone asked you to do a job you said you do a job for one hour and you get 12 dollars. how would you feel about that i mean it depends i mean that's i don't know what am i supposed to say yeah like what are you like i was just thinking like like, do you think that twelve? Do- I guess this goes into the minimum wage well, argument. If you think twelve dollars is. is too low, I said I was just saying. Let's say it's a normal job. Like, it's not something extremely difficult. I let's say let's say what I do at Shoprite. Okay. I pretty much just I'm a shopper. People order online. All all you have to do is walk around the store and you scan in their items. It's through the device. Blah blah. That's pretty much what you have to do for the most part. I have been. You think twelve dollars is enough for how much effort you have to put in? Yes. That may be controversial, but I, you know, the more, oh my, I'm going to sound like a total, like the more I read about like economics and stuff like that, the more it talks about like, you know, minimum wage, the amount you're getting paid for the skills that you offer to the company. And if you're so easily yeah. replaceable, you know what I'm saying? Like a easily replaceable job, like, you know, both of us, basically, you know, you're obviously not going to get paid. <laughs> hey, <much> hey, as... <laughs> hey. <laughs> I know I'm, I'm not replaceable. <laughs> you're basically, <laughs> you know, you're, you're not going to get paid as much as somebody that could, you know, work a computer and, or some comp sign. And have, they have a certain skill set yeah, that not everyone has. Yeah. So uh, it's tough. It's I was, tough to I, was I don't want to cut you off. I was going to bring up like if you think minimum wage needs to be raised, but I think this is a good topic for when we have Mr. Fausti on cuz that's going to be all about oh, business have, and stuff. So so we can have a, f- a full conversation about a minimum wage. I also wanted to talk about like the job crisis, how no one like everyone's looking for jobs because of unemployment right now, how much they're getting, but we can also save that for that episode. By the way, like 5 minutes ago I said I was going to look up the stat. It says over 60% of the population are unhappy in their work, which is pretty much where you spend most of your adult life. I bet you it's higher than that. It's 
exactly so that's why that's why you said ideally you'd want to be doing something you like but statistically there's a good chance that you're going to be unhappy <laughs> the crazy with what part, you do and even, and even i mean you get to choose though you know what i'm saying like it, it, yeah that is that, that's what's crazy but a hard thing is you know you're, you're supposed to choose when you're 18 when you really don't know what you want to do that that basically decides the rest of your you know the career path of your life you could change yeah uh, oh man you know but I'm i saying? think i think the, i think the number is gonna go down my reasoning is that <laughs> with like yeah, i know i was trying to, i was trying to think while i was saying it um the reason is that with all the new avenues that are opening up, you see people making money through social media. And although that looks easy, I'm sure there are negative aspects that come along with it. Like, I guess, mental health, being in the public spotlight. But I feel like so many people now, and even with the pandemic, they're creating their own jobs. They're starting their own businesses. Maybe that number will go down. But I mean, right now, statistically, and yeah, you're right. At 18, or I get even if when you graduate, 22, 23, you decide what you do for the rest of your life, or at least your degree is limited to a certain amount of things. So it is, it's kind of worrying in a sense. Yeah. You have to make that decision now for what you spend <laughs> the majority of your time as an adult doing. It's, uh, it's making me kind of depressed now that I think about it. Uh, but I mean, both my parents ended up changing what you know they wanted to do later on. I mean, I, I know my mom's... My mom... Man, I'm not sure what she majored in first, but then she, like, you know, she got her bachelor's degree, then totally switched it up and went into science. And so, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, hopefully, I trust the process, figure it out. <laughs> trust the process, baby. So, uh, overrated a job? Maybe we're giving jobs too much stick. At the end of the day, it's nice having however much money, getting however much money every week or every two weeks. I think so. I'm gonna go. What do you I'm gonna go with overrated. I'm Maybe, go with... I feel like I go with underrated for everything because I usually think of like some of the things we talk about. So I usually have it with underrated in mind. And I know jobs are important. And even when I went on some interviews for my co-ops, like even stuff that I learned at Shoprite, I can translate to the engineering world. Just like being disciplined, you know, being on time, communicating with others. Um, working in a team and stuff like that so you do learn you do learn um, what's it called valuable skills even with things you don't plan to do for your career but I still think just thinking that like kind of the rat race which is just like you work to get money to pay off bills but then you just you kind of stay in that cycle you wake up go to work you never really have a prolonged break from anything I think that's such a the only thing you have to look forward to is I think that's such a poor way to look at it. I really do. Yeah, I think... Yeah, maybe you're right. I'm just kind of thinking right now. I don't know why. What do you have to say about that? I mean, you know, you could get in the... You go down different avenues and talk about purpose and all that stuff, but... Like, in, like yeah, getting a bit too deep. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think minimum wage jobs... Minimum wage jobs are overrated. Yeah, I'm a pretty, but would you argue that they need minimum wage jobs? Because I'm not saying minimum wage jobs, but minimum wage jobs are usually ones that require a low skill set and not everyone has the money to go to college and get that skill set. So you could argue that minimum wage jobs are needed for people to make money that don't have access to that skill set or means to improve. That's, that's we'll say this for the business one with Mr. Fausty. <laughs> yes, He'll yes, probably yes. shed shed some wisdom yes, we'll on us. Um, so overall, you're gonna go overrated or underrated? Overrated, overrated. Oh, we're we'll, oh, we're gonna agree for once. Okay, Let's we, go. we agreed on the last one All too. Right. We agreed on the last one. Working out. No, no, wait, maybe. Wait, we I don't even know no, what the last one was. No, we, we didn't. Did. Never mind. No, we didn't. Anyway, let's go to the next one. So that was already three. We're going. We have six today. So we're halfway done. The next one is video games. Mm. And the reason I I put this one here is because i feel like every few months i change my mind on video games like i'll go from a phase where like i start playing video games now i'm like you know it's good to play online with friends you know you communicate 
with others. It's nice to talk to people, but then sometimes I'm just thinking, man, I could be doing so much more with my life right now. So what do you think? Overall video games, overrated or underrated? You know, that's a, that's a tough one, too. I get your point. And it, it's tough. Do you, you know, feel that way, too? Yeah, for sure. I mean, you make a lot of memories playing with, you know, the boys sometimes. But, man, is it a waste of time sometimes. Like, it, yeah, I, I totally get what you mean. Like, yeah. you, you, sometimes you look back at it and you're like, man, I just played for, like, four hours. That was unbelievably unproductive. And I could have been doing something better with my time, but... Could have been doing literally anything else. I don't know. I mean, I guess you'd weigh it against... I don't know. I'm not sure. It, it's... I think it's overrated. It, there are some good games out there, though. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I'm going to play the devil's... Uh, not the devil's advocate. I'm just going to go the opposite of you again. I'm going to go <laughs> underrated. I think... I do see... And especially, like, after some times when it's, like... Not not too much recently, but when I was younger, we'd have a day off from school, and I'd be like, oh, I'm so happy to have this day off. I just want to relax, and then I play video games for eight hours, and it's like, it's eight o'clock, and I'm like, I literally wasted my whole day off. But when you did bring up memories with the boys, like, we go back, we look at two years ago, I feel like it's always around winter break, around mm. Christmas time when we're playing games. Like, this past year, we had Rocket League, and we look back on it. That was just a lot of fun um, when we played uh star wars battlefront a couple years ago back when fortnite was good all the memories we had with like when fortnite first came out that that was a lot of fun to look back on so i think i think it's good to let your mind escape sometimes too the way how i like working out and sometimes running sometimes video games you're focused on the game you don't think about all the other stresses that you have in life i think it's i think you need that in life to kind of keep your mental state balanced yeah i agree I think if you are are disciplined with your time management, it it could be underrated. But I'm not. I'm not. So, you know, it's funny you say that. I've been playing. <laughs> you you go you go. No no go. You, you. I started playing War Gone Warzone again recently, and I feel like you might remember. I was like this with other games. I am Mister One More Game. <laughs> I'll say miss I'll say one more game. I'll end up staying on for two more hours playing ten more games. Yeah. It's just yeah, I am not disciplined with my time. Especially if I don't have Alright, I can't go on the Xbox if I have stuff to do. Cause it's just like who knows when I'm gonna get off. I usually have to rely on one of my other friends to get off for me to be like, Yeah, all right, I'll just get off. Cause if if they're staying on and I'm the one to get off, it's just not happening. Yep, yeah. So <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, it's tough. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So it's funny. You said if you have time management underrated, I do not. And I'm still going to say underrated. Just <laughs> it's good to provide that escape. And like, la- it's usually a good laugh with your friends one way or another. Mm. You have anything else to add about video games? Nope, not really. Uh, we could. You want to you wanna skip the next one or you want to do the next one? Or because... No, I, I'll do the next one because okay, right. I, I went to went to one recently. Okay, right. So number five, I'll do number five. You can say number six. Yep. Uh, number five, I have museums over or underrated. First of all, when's the last time you've been to a museum? Mm, probably during COVID. I went to uh, a couple of art museums. Just Where? Um, I went to the one in Princeton. That's actually, oh, yeah. that's the only one. And it, I don't know if you'd, it's not that big. You know what I'm saying? The last time I've been to. No, but it's in, I went there. I went there once. It's an, it's a decent museum. Yep. Um. How'd I, you feel about it? How'd I feel about it? I was taking AP Art History at the time and I saw a couple of pieces that we were learning about. <laughs> Shout out Miss like, Bufus. Yes. I was, I was like, I was like, that's cool. And that was the extent, you know, <laughs> That's about all that happened, though. <laughs> That's, I like. So, that. are you gonna go over or underrated? I'm gonna go underrated. Actually, I kind of, I, I do like museums. All right. I actually, uh, when I, when I did a camp in Michigan for architecture, ooh, uh, <laughs> I, I, we went. Oh, to, uh, big artist over here! Watch <laughs> out, everybody. We went to, 
a glass museum where they had a bunch of like glass sculptures and there was a guy stained glass and stuff too yeah yeah and he was blowing glass and he was like making chess pieces like right in front of us it was really Mm. really cool and so like stuff like that is is cool I, i i think i think museums are underrated though yeah i'm gonna agree with you um recently i went to the philadelphia museum of art like two weeks ago i don't know how big it is in compared to other museums it's like it's like three floors there's a lot of stuff there i don't think it's like one of the best in the world though but i think they're underrated as well i kind of just i went with friends but i kind of went off on my own a little bit and i was just especially i took art history with you Uh so it was like cool to see some of the art pieces not exact not the exact pieces but like similar styles from the same era and for me it was just like extremely relaxing i didn't really say anything i was just looking around kind of studying the art and it was kind of cool to see things that were made like hundreds of years ago what they were able to make then and they also had um it wasn't just paintings they also had some of the full room ones when it's like oh this is a 1600 english living room or they also had this one section where it was like transported you to Asia. It was like all the structures there. You know, like the little the little kind of tents that people meditate at or they, like dojos kind of that you see in movies. Okay. It's, it's hard to describe. I don't know. Do you know what I'm talking about? No, They're kind of like beige. They have like brown wood. Uh, like, a, like a teepee? Is that what they're called? Like, did I... not, a, not exactly. I'm, I'm not it, sure. I don't... I have no idea how to describe it, honestly. I feel like... But yeah, you walked in and it was kind of like a full exhibit, not just the art. I thought that was really cool and really relaxing. I want to go back there and go to some other museums. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna agree with you and go underrated. Okay. The uh, especially yeah, I haven't been to one in like a while. Not since I got a little bit older. And now that I'm older, I feel like it's nice to just walk around, chill. It's like it's pretty quiet in there. Once again, your mind can just wander off. You don't have to think about whatever's like stressing you in your life or whatever problems you have Mm. all right you want to share the last one oh the last one is pets saber do you do you have any pets no i do not have any pets i have had my dad's allergic to all furry animals so i haven't really (laughs) had any good pets i've had you know a couple hermit crabs here and there some fish but i did i would i was gonna say overrated what, what are you laughing at? I, hermit crabs. Oh, yeah. You said hermit crabs and fish. And you just reminded me of back when I, I, I yeah, I, I, man, I wouldn't even feed my, when I was little, I'd forget to feed them all the time. My poor hermit crabs, man, they were probably starving in their appetite. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, yeah. I'm going to let you go first on this just because I haven't really had any good pets, but I did. Our friend Matt went on vacation, so I did have to feed his dogs like twice a day, go in there and let him out. I thought it was kind of nice. You know, I was like, maybe I could become a, a dog owner in the future. A dog is probably like one of the pets I would consider. I don't know. They are they are kind of a lot of work, and I feel like they're pretty expensive. So I'd have to think about it. I was, I'm still going to think about if it's over or underrated based on what you say. Okay, well, I have two cats, and I think they're unbelievably yeah, I hate your cats. overrated, guys. I like my cats. Ah, nice. Don't get me wrong, but they shed so much. I mean, the house is hairy, man. You gotta clean the house. They just it. The hair is unbelievable. Not that not that they're annoying themselves, but it's it's mostly the hair. It, actually, a lot of it is just how. Yeah, just much hair it just gets around everywhere, and how much you have to clean it, it's just it's brutal. I might change my decision based off what you said. I forgot about that. That is so annoying. I don't have pets, but I can't even imagine how annoying it is to clean the pets that are con- that are sh- uh, shedding yeah, constantly. Sh- and I also, I did. I do have a story about your cat. I'm mm-hmm. allergic to cats, first of all. But I just took like it wasn't too bad at your house. I just took a Benadryl. But I was sleeping downstairs on the couch. I wake up and your cat is like three inches from my face. It's just the first thing I see when I wake up. It scared the crap out of me. As if I didn't dislike cats enough. Partially because I'm allergic. Partially because they do nothing. They're kind of mean. They shed. 
I just hate them. Like, what, what, what are they good for? Honestly, they can be nice sometimes. They can be nice sometimes. They can be nice. Like, what? Oh, you can pet them. Yeah, you know. You can't. Can. You can't really. P- I guess you could play with them a little bit, but they're not like dogs. You can take them for walks. You know. They they don't annoy you like dogs do though. Like you know, dogs are constantly all over you. Like the cats are kind of you know they they keep their their distance sometimes. You know. They're more independent. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it depends how how you look at it. I did say underrated. I don't have. I haven't had that many pets, so I, I, I actually, would say like it is kind of a responsibility. And to think about how much it's, it would cost, and the uh, what did you say? Shedding. I know there are some dogs or cats that don't shed. But I'm gonna switch mine to overrated. <laughs> Maybe I'm sure I might want to get a dog in the future, but right now I'm going overrated. I actually have a funny story about my goldfish that I used to have when I was a kid, and he, he got his stuck head. He got his head stuck in one of the rocks, uh, in his little, uh, what his tank, and he died. But little fish bowl. Yeah, but my parents said that they were gonna bring him to the vet, and and like try to revive him. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, while, while I was gone. <laughs> they went out and bought a new fish <laughs> and put it in the tank. <laughs> but it looked nothing. Like it was like twice as big as the goldfish from before. <laughs> it, was, it was terrible. I feel like I remember one time being really upset. I feel like it might have even been a frog. Why would he have frogs? I guess it was a fish. Like we thought it was dead or it was dead. I could be making this up. This is how I remember. It was a long time ago. So it was dead. So we put it in the toilet to flush it. And as soon as we flushed it, no it way. started moving. <laughs> and then, and then it, I, this could be a fake story. I'm just warning you guys. This is just how, this is what I remember. And I remember, I feel like I was like crying. I was like six, seven mm. years old. I was like, oh no, my fish, it was alive. But uh, yeah, that does sound like a fake story. Maybe I'm remembering it wrong. <laughs> But yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna agree with you and go, and go overrated. You know, hopefully there are no little kids washing because I feel like mm. there are a lot of parents that are be like, uh, you know, or it's like, what do, what do they say? I oh, when- they're I think there's a com- a common thing that they're like, oh, my dog ran away when really it just died, or that's like a thing you tell little kids or something. Yeah. I forgot the lie they tell to try and make it easier for them. I, I'm gonna write I, I that down in my parenting notebook. If my child's fish, if my child's fish dies, <laughs> just be like, I'm gonna go take it. To, I'm taking this dead fish to the vet to get it revived, <laughs> and then come back with a new one. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good story. All right. All right. To round it off, I'll go first, and then you go. I'm going to say, I said, ice cream underrated, working out underrated, a job overrated, video games and museums underrated, and pets overrated. What did you say one more time to round it up? Uh, Ice cream overrated, working out overrated, a job overrated, video games overrated, (laughs) museums underrated, pets underrated. Do you enjoy anything in life? I I, I feel like, I I swear I put a couple more underrateds in there somewhere. (laughs) I, I switched ice cream. I switched ice cream to underrated. <laughs> a lot of them were on the fence. You know, a lot of them were. They could have been either. Yeah, maybe, maybe we were just not picking the right topics for you, you know. Mm. Or or you just hate everything in life and you're a, a sad human being. But anyway, going on to the next topic. Um, <laughs> what? This is just I was listening to what someone else said in a podcast. Um. So the thing is, do you think reading books is important? And to explain that, I feel or this is kind of the guy's explanation too in the podcast was that books they were kind of made um, to gain knowledge, and that was like the only form of gaining knowledge or like telling stories from one generation to another. But now we have all these different mediums, as I said, podcasts, audio books, YouTube videos, kind of just any other sort of um of stuff that you can access online. And also there are different types of learners, like visual learners that kind of need to see it to understand it. So do you think that books are still important as opposed to the other things? Do you think you get more out of them? Or what do you think about just the best way to learn in general? I I thought about this before 
and I think if you want to learn something quick, you know, YouTube is better for that and, you know, your online resources. But if you really want to go in depth, I think that's where you start buying books, you know, like or at least early quarantine for me when I wanted to learn more about business, you know, like YouTube videos only got you so far before you started buying books. Yeah, and it's a, a lot point. more in depth than almost any YouTube video or podcast could get you. But I think if you want to learn something quick, like I wanted to learn about, you know, how a car engine works the other way, uh, the other day. And I watched a YouTube video on it and it showed me how like, uh, I forget how many, like some six cylinder engine works or something like that. And I was like, oh, I, you know, that's interesting. But. Yeah. I feel like there's a show I used to watch kind of, that was like called how it's made. And I feel mm -hmm. like I, it would be so maybe not so difficult, but I feel like I would struggle to see how a car engine works. If I had to read about it with all the jargon, it's like, this part and the exhaust and this and this, I feel like if I just saw and it showed me the visual of like the gas is here, this is what it powers, then this moves and then this moves and then this is how it fuels the car or makes it move. I feel like that's a lot easier. So what you're saying is there, there's a time and a place for both. Yeah. And also, do you think if you compare, because it's not just nonfiction, there's also fiction books. Do you think fiction books are important or how do you compare those to stuff like movies, which is kind of just similar thing. One, obviously you, you have, you can see, you have the audio one. You're just kind of reading. It's almost the same thing. Like I think fiction books are a lot more in depth than the movies are. You know what I'm saying? Like the movies only get so far, whereas the books have a lot of extra detail, or at least that's how, it's kind of how game of Thrones is. I feel like, you know, you haven't watched game of Thrones, but. You know, there's just a lot more yeah. detail in the books than there is in the show or anything that they could produce in the limited amount of time they have. But uh, I think fiction books, fiction books are, at least from what I've read, they're, they're good. <laughs> yeah, that, that and I was thinking <laughs> one, one downside, because I quite like watching movies. And I don't do it that often, but I feel like my... Also, another reason I bring this up is my one issue with books. I know you kind of had this habit of you would get up and read. Mm -hmm. I, I need to get in a habit of reading or also I have that struggle. I, I try and start reading before I go to bed, but then I just get so tired. I'm too comfortable. I start falling asleep. I can't read more than like a few pages. Or if I do read more than a few pages, I'm not focused and I don't. I have to reread the past few pages. I know what you're saying. So I feel like that's why for me personally... I think there are definitely some other alternatives. I definitely want to start reading even a little bit, but stuff like audiobooks, I feel like it's also when I'm doing something else like working out, listening to an audiobook, I can kind of multitask better because when you read, I, you need your full attention. But with audiobooks, you only need to like, it's like you still, you still need your attention to process what's saying. But like if I'm running, I don't have to think about running. I can think about the book while continue running. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I mean, the last audiobook I read was Creativity, Inc. by Ed Catmull. He was the CEO of Pixar. And I read it every day on the way to work. And it was kind of just something to look forward to. You read it or listen to it? Listen to it. Not well. <laughs> I didn't read it on my way to work. Uh -huh. I, you know, I, you know don't, 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 want to, don't want to promote, you know, reading and driving. Focus on the road, kids. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> anyway. It was just something, you know, to look forward to whenever I was... I was driving, you know, because listening to music every day is, you know, it's fine, but I feel like, you know, even then I could be doing something more productive. Yeah, for me, it's especially if no new music comes out, I kind of get bored. I'm like, I don't really want to listen to the same songs again, even though like I have a lot of music. I kind of looking for something different. And I completely went off on a tangent. How the much? reason I brought up movies and f how much, how much what? How much logic could you? How, how much logic could you possibly listen to? You know. All right, buddy. I don't even. <laughs> I, I don't even listen to. Lo I haven't listened to logic in a while. <laughs> but anyway, um, we will. We will have an episode on music just for anyone listening. I think our our next few upcoming episodes are gonna be probably one on music, one on movies and TV. I don't know if we're gonna keep that together or separate. And then I wanna now that I'm almost done with school, I wanna look up how we can get Mr. Fausti on or Josh. So that we can talk about business and stocks and stuff. Anyway, off on another tangent. The reason I brought up movies and like nonfiction or sorry, fiction books is because 
reading books does have that um aspect of you get to picture everything in your head it's like obviously with non-fiction books you'd kind of want to see like with a car engine i wouldn't want to leave it up to what i imagine i'd want to see exactly how it works in a car but with fiction you get to imagine the scene you get to imagine how all the characters look their appearance and i feel like that can add another element to it yeah but then again i think i i mean i was re- yeah I- you can go uh like i just i've been reading fiction a little bit more lately and i just started reading the dune series and it, it was it was kind of interesting that like what i read was pretty similar there's a movie coming out for it to like what i'd expect it to look like more more similar than i thought it would be at least and so that yeah i don't know it, i do like that kind of creative aspect of you get to you know imagine what is going on so yeah yeah for me it's not just to sum up kind of everything we said i mean fiction is completely different i think that's the main i guess the main thing that keeps coming up reading is another way to kind of let your mind escape and fiction you're just trying to like escape you're not necessarily trying to learn about anything that's also a great way i would say just fiction i think um you know books and movies are great but I think with nonfiction, that's just like the best way for you to learn any way that you're, you know, you're educating yourself, you're learning about something you're passionate about, whether that's through a book, whether that's through TV, documentary, whatever, it, any, anything helps, you know, you don't necessarily have to read. It's not like, oh, you read it, you're watching a YouTube video to learn about this when you could read about it. I think any way is kind of just important as long as you're exercising your brain and growing your knowledge. Yeah. yeah. All right. So. Just a couple more things. I want to talk about it uh, real here quick. We go. Right now, we got Mayweather versus Logan Paul happening tonight. And I don't want to go into this too much about the actual aspect. For anyone that doesn't know, Floyd Mayweather, pretty much considered the greatest boxer of all time. He's 50 and 0 in his professional career. That's, and that's, I think he has two exhibition. All right. Well, one, he's definitely one of the greatest yeah, at yeah. 50 and 0. He hasn't lost a professional fight. And this, this is an exhibition, so it wouldn't go not, on his record. Not yet. Logan Paul, a, a, you, <laughs> a YouTuber that's been boxing for about three years and is taking him on. So, I mean, Mayweather's not that big. Logan Paul's got like 40 pounds on him and like five inches. But I would just think how – what do you have to say about this fight, Joe, first of all? I'm saying this isn't even a fight. Logan Paul's not even going to get a hit on him. It's going to be embarrassing for Logan. That's all. I, I, it's, I, I don't know what to say. I mean, I don't even know why this fight is happening, to be honest. I don't know how it happened. I don't know if Floyd Mayweather needs money or why he'd put his reputation on the line like this. It, it, it's not. He's not putting his reputation on the line. That's why, that's why he took the fight. He's making a lot of money to beat up Logan Paul. I mean, if you watch the tape of Logan Paul versus KSI, it's horrible. It's horrible. I mean, yeah, I'm not, and I think you as well. We don't. We're not the most knowledgeable about boxing. We're just thinking about in a sports mindset. Imagine, like he has, he does have a big social media following, which is why he got the um the fight probably, and Floyd and everyone knows that he's gonna be able to bring a lot of money to the event, and it's gonna be, it's not just gonna be hardcore boxing fans, which is what Floyd would get if he fought another boxer. It's kind of a new audience. But think of how crazy it would be. Forget the fact that he's famous. Imagine, I know, I know. There's not soccer is what I play. You play hockey. They're not one on one sports. But imagine you and me were like, all right, we're gonna make a soccer team. We're gonna train hard for the next three years. Logan, he had a couple of fights which he tied and then lost officially. Mm-hmm. So we're gonna have two games, and then we're gonna go and play Barcelona or like a really good team. How crazy would that sound? Like it, just, it just doesn't make any sense. And like I guess the great thing about the fight, or I guess that's like people have the underdog aspect where like Logan, he should not land a punch. But the fact that he's like 40 pounds more and has like that the genetic or just like physical advantage, people, you know, in the back of their minds are like, oh, just imagine he landed one good shot and just like knocked the greatest boxer of all time out. How crazy would that be? It would undermine everything that like 
professional athletes stand for the fact that you have to work hard your whole life to be the best it would just it just wouldn't matter anymore i mean if logan paul wins it would say all you have to do is work hard for a few years and you can be as good as any athlete out there pretty much watching jake paul knock out nate robinson was heartbreaking i mean that was heartbreaking to watch i it was i mean uh I, I know Nate Robinson obviously is, is not Floyd Mayweather, but he also beat Ben Askren. To say the least. And Ben Askren, you know, he was he was a fighter, so yeah, I don't want to go into too much analysis yeah. because I don't once again I'm I don't really know that much about fighting. Guys at all. If if, if <laughs> we'll know we'll know this result when it comes out. My little once again, Costa, my younger brother is convinced Logan is going to win. That sounds like and something I'm like, I don't... an 8th grader would say. Yeah, it's it's not even just like, oh yeah, Logan has a real chance. He's like, bro, I'm telling you. Over dinner, he's like, bro, I'm telling you, Logan's going to win. And I'm just like... There's a part of me that doesn't want to get too cocky and be like, dude, I don't think Logan's going to land a punch just in case like he ends up doing decent. <laughs> no, he's not. But, There's, yeah, no like... There's no way. There's no way. Isaac. That's what that that's what that's the thing about this fight that that's interesting. It's like realistically, there should be absolutely no chance. He shouldn't even come close to hitting him, let alone actually landing a punch. But just the back of your mind, the thought of what if he lasts a few rounds? What if it gets? It's I think it's eight rounds, three minutes each. What if he gets to the sixth round and he's still there? Like how crazy would that be? I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not even. I'm not gonna watch it probably. Maybe boot. Or I can't say yeah, it's it's past my bedtime. All right, all right. I think we're just gonna wrap wrap it up on that. Sounds Any good. final Sounds comments good. about the fight? Anything else over underrated? Nope. I I I put my house on Floyd though. For sure, a hundred percent. I honestly, I put all my money on. Uh, if on if 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 Log- Logan's not gonna win, I put all if my Logan money on wins. Floyd. <laughs> I don't think he is. I don't think he is. I just want that's gonna be such a great audio clip. If that Logan we're gonna wins, put on put on everything. If Logan's wins, you'd be homeless. No, it's rigged. It's rigged. That's what I'm saying. I can't be wrong in this situation. <laughs> it's, not, it's just. It's all right well you guys will know the result by the time this goes out. It's going out June eighth on Tuesday morning. So once again, thank you guys for listening. As I said. If you want to look forward to the next few episodes, probably, I don't know in what order exactly, music, movies, slash TV show, that might be the same episode, we might split it up, and then hopefully having Josh Fausti come on soon, talk about business, stocks, and whatever else comes up. So, once again, thank you guys for listening, make sure to follow us on Instagram, and we'll see you guys next week. See you guys next week.